Hi, and welcome to Robust Tools. I have a two-part video for you today. Part one will be about our universal stand, and part two will be about our new scout lathe. Now the universal stand fits the scout lathe perfectly, but it's also adaptable to a wide variety of small and medium-sized lathes. It can be raised up for the standing turner, and it can be lowered for the seated turner. More on that in part one of our video. Part two, we go into our scout lathe, it's a really nice, high-quality, small lathe made with many of the same features that our larger lathes have. It has stainless steel ways, a durable powder coat finish, and a seven-year warranty that covers all the parts, both electronic and mechanical. And it's made right here in my hometown, Barneveld, Wisconsin. Let's get started. Your universal stand comes unassembled, so let's begin by reading the directions. Step number one is to assemble the center section. We can adjust this for short or long lathes. We're going to set this one up for our scout. After the bolts are tight, we'll set aside the center section and work on a leg. When we put the legs together, we also set the spindle height. A chart in the instruction tells us how many holes to leave exposed for a given height. The stand can be adjusted between 37 and a half and 50 inches when using the scout, enough for almost any body size. When we have the leg where we want it, we're going to install the center section. We're just going to install these bolts finger tight for now, and then set the unit on the floor. Time for the other leg assembly. There's an extra bolt hole we'll use temporarily to help position the assembly on the rest of the stand. We're going to also leave these bolts finger tight for now. To go to the next step of the assembly, let's put the stand up in its normal upright position. We're setting this stand up for a standing turner. When we install the pivots, we'll select a notch that keeps the top level. If we were setting this up for a seated turner, we could choose one of the other notches to tip the lay forward to a more natural position. Now the stand is ready for the scout. You can see that by adjusting the center section, we can make the stand shorter or longer for different length lathes. The scout weighs about 175 pounds. We've removed the banjo and tailstock to save weight. Get a husky friend for the heavy end. Time to bolt the lathe to the stand. Because we left the leg bolts loose, we can easily line the holes up. With the lathe securely bolted to the stand, we can now tighten the leg bolts. Holes are provided if you want to bolt the stand to the floor or add leveling pads. The center section doubles as a tool rack. There is also a tool rack on the top of each leg. Here we see the universal stand adjusted for a seated turner. We've dropped the height and tipped the lathe forward for a more natural tool presentation. It only takes a few minutes to make these adjustments, but it is best to take the lathe off the stand first. The universal stand is readily adapted to other lathes with the addition of user-supplied adapter boards. We just use 2x4s and lag bolts to fit this Nova to the stand. Your solution might be more elegant. Time to switch gears and talk about the Scout. Let's start with some basic specs. The spindle is threaded inch and a quarter eight and 33 millimeter metric is optional. Both the spindle and tailstock have a number two Morris taper. The swing is 14 inches and you can turn 26 inches between centers. A 1 horsepower US made Leeson motor is standard and a 1.5 horsepower is available. For the US and Canada, we wire them 110 volts. For export, we wire them 220 and they will work on 50 or 60 hertz. More specs can be found on our website. Controls are very simple forward, reverse, and speed control. There are no belts to change. To stop the spindle, press anywhere along the red stop bar. Speed is displayed on the US-made inverter. 
The Scout runs smoothly from 50 to 3000 RPM. The inboard spindle has right hand threads, the outboard left hand. You get two face plates, both threaded to go on either end. You can use one as a hand wheel if you wish. Other standard accessories include a 12 inch tool rest with hardened top, a knockout rod that works in the spindle and tail stock, a robust live center, and our ring drive set for spindles and bowls. The spindle lock doubles as the index mechanism and is mechanically linked to the full length stop bar. When indexing or using the spindle lock, the lathe cannot be started accidentally. Pushing on the stop bar releases the mechanism. There are 24 index positions. Here's an interesting little feature of our banjo. The hole that receives the tool rest is not round. It's machined like a V-block and gives three solid points of contact. Like the headstock and banjo, we machine the tailstock from a quality casting made in a foundry here in Wisconsin. There is a 3 8 inch through hole and a number two Morris taper. The handle can be adjusted to lock to the front or back. A round keeper facilitates removal and reinstallation. The graduated quill even lets you know when you're getting to the end of your travel. Time to do some turning. This is a piece of box elder I recently harvested. It's about 13 inches across at its largest dimension and about 15 inches long. Weight is approximately 50 pounds. I'm going to use our ring style drive to power it. Because the Scout has variable speed, I can go slow and get it rounded up without a lot of shaking and vibration. I'm also getting good material removal rates. And this is just the one horsepower motor. Think of what I might do with a one and a half. Now let's set up for a long spindle. I'm going to install the optional bed extension. There are a couple of set screws to help with the alignment. I'm using the tailstock to guide the installation. For demonstration purposes, I've grabbed a 4x4 from the shipping and receiving department. It's 42 inches long, about the maximum we can turn with this setup. I'm using the ring drive system I showed you previously to drive the spindle. You can also use the bed extension for outboard turning. Just bolt it to the other end. No fancy alignment needed. For this part of the video, I've selected a piece of spalted maple. It's fairly dry and I won't get the removal rates you saw on the Freshbox Elder. You can turn 21 inches outboard on the Scout. This piece is 19 inches corner to corner and weighs just over 40 pounds. It's very important to tighten the safety set screws when turning outboard, as well as have your wood securely fastened to your faceplate or chuck. If you want to turn outboard, you also need to get the tool rest extension. Once again, the variable speed allows me to go slow and get the piece rounded up without a lot of shaking or vibration. After I get it balanced, I can turn up the speed a bit. Well, I've got this baby roughed out. I've got a tenon turn for the chuck when I turn it around and, and hollow out the inside. I think I'm going to call it quits for turning for tonight. Uh, I'd like to thank you for watching and please feel free to contact us if you have any questions about the Scout or any of our other lathes uh, and turning accessories. Thanks for watching.